is of power because we are kings and our words matter. You got to believe in what Abraham believed. Well, by believing, you can walk in the blessings of God. So that is why there is the blessing of Abraham and there is the faith of Abraham. You can't get the blessing just by being born to Abraham. You got to get the blessing by having the faith of Abraham, he says. I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping. Worship him. I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus, in your presence, so Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 onwards. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now, it's a wonderful theme. In order to understand how the blessing of the Lord works, really we need to understand the blessing of Abraham. You need to see blessing operating, blessing being lived out in a person's life. Then only you'll understand what blessing will do to a person. That's why God puts Abraham as a showpiece before us. God deliberately picked Abraham, a man out of nowhere, just picked him out. 
and blessed him, told him he's going to bless him. He never asked for blessing. God went and told him, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. And in you shall all the nations of this earth be blessed. I'll make your name great. The man never aspired for anything, never asked for anything, but God voluntarily goes and tells him, deliberately blesses him. And he does it so that Abraham and his descendants will be a showpiece before the world. Why? Not so that God can be just the God of Abraham and Jews. No, that was never God's intention. God is the God of the human race. God made everyone. So God wants to bless everyone. But he needs someone to show to the world that this is how blessing will work. If you'll trust in me, this is how you'll be. So he picked Abraham, blessed him and his descendants and put them before the world as a very special nation so that all the nations of the world will see and know that this is what belief or faith in the living God will do to a person. So you need to understand the blessing of Abraham in order to understand how the blessing works. The thing is, in studying the blessing of Abraham, we are learning many things. One of the things that we learn about is the gospel itself. Because here we are told in the verses that I just read that the scripture foresaw what was going to happen. Foresaw that in Abraham all the nations of the earth will be blessed or the Gentiles will be justified or non-Jews. People who are not the descendants of Abraham will also be blessed with the blessing of Abraham and foresaw that and is preached the gospel to Abraham, it seems. Abraham was preached the gospel. How was he preached the gospel? In Genesis chapter 12 verse 3, he was told, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's the gospel. So what is the gospel? The gospel is about how the blessing that was upon Abraham has now come upon everyone. That's the gospel, according to this. If you look at this, that's the gospel. But many people are not able to see that because blessing of Abraham includes much more than just forgiveness of sins, much more than just justification. It includes much more than what is commonly taught. Christians, many times we teach forgiveness of sins and then going to heaven. But the gospel is about much more. Jesus himself said that. Let me turn to Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Jesus said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. See, the first item itself, he says, I'm going to preach the gospel to the poor. There is a gospel to the poor. If you go and tell the poor there is mansions in heaven, he's not going to say, thank you. I'm going to live in a hut here and going to get mansions over there. No. There is a gospel to the poor. What can be the gospel to the poor? What will possibly be the gospel to the poor? Now, very simple. To go and tell the poor, there is hope for you. There is hope. There can be blessing in your life. You don't have to be like this. That God can help you. That God can help you rise out of the dust heap of your poverty and come out of that and have a better life. There can be a better life for you. You don't have to live in this. This is not your destiny. God made you to be a king. God made you to dominate the earth. God didn't make you to be poor. That's the gospel to the poor. Don't you think so? So Jesus said, God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I like it because the first item itself is that poor poverty. It deals with poverty. Poverty, I think, is one of the worst things that can ever happen to a person. Just think about that. A person can be sick sometimes, but if he doesn't also have money, then he's in big trouble. <laughs> he's sick. And he doesn't have the money to go to a hospital to eat the right kind of food, to get the right kind of medicines and, and to do whatever is needful for him, to live in at least some comfort. <laughs> doesn't have anything, no hope at all. Sick, I mean, sickness is cruelty, but on top of that, if you have poverty, I mean, you are literally finished. That's the worst cruelty that can happen to any person. All right, gospel to the poor, he says. Then he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Now here it's talking about mental, emotional difficulties that people have. The broken hearted people. Many people's hearts are broken today. In many situations, they're disappointed in life. Frustrated, they've trusted in people. Disappointed. And uh, broken hearted people are plenty in our world. Jesus said, I've, came to, I've come to preach the gospel to the broken hearted. To heal the broken hearted. If you're broken hearted today, 
if you're in a situation where you're crying on the inside and emotionally broken and distraught, I'm telling you there is hope in Jesus Christ. And to proclaim liberty to the captives, people are in bondages in to so many things, evil habits and so on. And uh, gospel proclaims liberty to those people. Recovery of sight to the blind. Worse than just the blind physically, there are people who are blind because they don't know what to do. There are people without any knowledge. The knowledge of God is not there. The knowledge about how to solve their problems is not there. Totally blind. They don't know where they're going. They can't live their life because they're blind totally. They don't know what to do. They're just like a blind person. And there is recovery of sight to them. And then it says, set at liberty those who are oppressed. There are many oppressed people in our country, in many countries of the world. There are problems like we have here, caste problems. And, and in many countries there are problems with various classes and so on. The gospel is to the oppressed. Now, people never think that gospel has to do with all of these things. We are doing a lot. The government does a lot and people and, society and various organizations do a lot to help the oppressed. Thank God for them. Every agency, every, uh, every group that is working for the upliftment of the oppressed is very good. But I'm telling you, the greatest aid that has come to the oppressed is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God for everybody that does everything. I'm thankful to God for all those people that help the oppressed. But I'm telling you, I'm glad to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because that's the real answer. The oppressed person will never live under the oppression anymore if he really understood the gospel of Jesus Christ. If the gospel really was preached. Now Christians sometimes miss the whole thing. They help the oppressed but they never preach the gospel. That's what disturbs me. I say help the oppressed but preach the gospel because that's the ultimate answer. All that you do to uplift the oppressed is only very little compared to the gospel itself. Compared to Jesus Christ himself. The gospel has to do with the Helping of the oppressed or the upliftment of the oppressed. See, the same thing with poverty alle uh, alleviation, you see. There are many organizations working to alleviate poverty from this world. The government is aim aiming at completely getting rid of poverty. Nobody wants poverty. I mean, you know, I've, I've really seen some Christian people that glorify poverty. There's something wrong with their mind, I think. They ought to be really crazy. You know, if you really appreciate poverty, you think poverty is virtuous, then something is wrong with your mind, you see. Nobody will accept that. Even the government doesn't agree with it. Even non-Christians will, will not accept it. There is something wrong with poverty. We need to get rid of it. The government is after it to get rid of it. We need to be after it much more than that. The real answer, with all the help that has been given to poverty alleviation or uh, all the organizations that are working towards uh, helping people that are in poverty, I appreciate them. Thank God for them. Wonderful work they're doing. But I'm telling you, let them do all the work. But there is nothing like the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the real answer to the poverty of the world. That's the gospel. You see, That's why I pointed out to you. That's why I pointed out to you when that woman came and emptied that bottle of ointment. A very costly ointment and washed Jesus with it. The disciples said, let's sell this and give it to the poor. But Jesus' answer was, leave her alone. And beyond that, he went and said, wherever the gospel is preached, this will be told. This thing that he, she had done will be told. What will be told? The fact that she emptied a costly bottle of ointment and washed him? What is there to tell? What is there to tell about what she did? The thing there to tell about it is, Jesus said, she is doing this to prepare me for my death, he said. In other words, everybody thought the answer to the poverty was to sell this costly bottle of ointment and give to the poor. That's one view. World thinks if we all put our resources together, we all give all, we, all that we can give and give to the poor, poverty will be rid of. That's one view. That will surely help. I think it will have some, it will give some help and there, there is some help there. I don't deny it. But... While everybody was thinking like that, this woman saw the answer. What is the answer? She was preparing him for his death. That means she believed that selling this bottle of ointment and giving to the poor is not going to completely alleviate poverty from this world. But when Jesus gets up on the cross and dies, that is going to really get rid of poverty in this world. That is what she believed. That is why it is said 
that whatever she did will be told wherever the gospel is preached. All right. Now, this is the gospel. The gospel, therefore, is something more than just forgiveness of sins and going to heaven tomorrow. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand. He's talking about the gospel that these people believed and received from the apostle Paul. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, see, listen to what the gospel is that he preached. I delivered to you, first of all, which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. What is the gospel? He says Christ died, Christ was buried, Christ rose again. Now, this is why you need preachers because sometimes the things are said in summary form. <laughs> it is said in brief statements. Then we have to expand it. We have to go to other places and find explanations for the very same thing. So here he's telling a summary. He's saying, this is the gospel you heard from me. And he can't go over the whole preaching, of course. So he says it in one little statement. He says, the gospel I preached to you, in essence, contained these things. That Christ died, Christ was buried, and Christ rose again according to the scriptures. All right, go to Galatians chapter 1 this time. Verse 6. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. He says, I preached you one gospel, but you're turning away to a different gospel. The thing is, Paul had a big problem with the Judaizers in those days. Judaizers are those people who came into the Christian church where people have been converted through Paul, the Gentiles who've been converted through Paul, and tried to bring in Judaism among them so that they will observe circumcision and all these Judaic traditions. So they were trying to mix Judaism with Christianity. Because in the early days, a lot of Christians were basically in background Jewish. They became Christians. So they brought their Jewishness into Christianity. So when somebody from Gentile background came into Christianity, they asked him, did you get circumcised? Because we were circumcised on the eighth day. Did you get circumcised? That's for the Jews, you see. They said, you should get circumcised. You should also become a Jew. Not enough to become a Christian. Not enough to put your faith in Christ. You should also become a Jew. This is what the confusion was. Paul didn't like that. Paul didn't think that becoming a Jew has anything to do with the gospel. The gospel, Paul was pre preaching the pure gospel. He was telling the Gentiles, you don't need to do all of that. You need to just come and have faith in Christ. Those that are of faith are children of Abraham. That's why he says in Galatians 3, 7. All those who are of faith are the children of Abraham. That means if you believed in Jesus and put your faith in him as Lord and Savior, then you are a child of Abraham just as much Isaac and Jacob and Joseph were sons of Abraham. You are as much sons of Abraham. He says, if you put your faith in Jesus. And you are blessed with the believing Abraham. Without becoming a Jew. By simply putting your faith in Jesus. You are blessed with the same blessing of Abraham. So he's saying, how come I preach to you one gospel and somebody else has come and influenced you. You are turning to legalism, to Judaism and all of these unnecessary things. How come you turn to another gospel, he says. Now listen to this. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than, we, than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. How strongly he puts it. He says, if anybody preaches any other gospel other than what we have preached, let it be accursed. So he's very serious about gospel and the content of the gospel. He says, anybody preaching any other gospel, adding anything to it, is accursed, he says. Listen to this. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you've received, let him be accursed. Again, he says that. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Now listen to this. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was, which was preached by me is not according to man. Do you know the gospel many times that is preached is according to man? <laughs> it is not really the revelation of Jesus Christ. A lot of people have made up something and preached to you as the gospel. He says, the gospel that I preached is not according to man. A very important statement. He says, not according to man. I did not get it from man. It is not some man's religion I'm preaching. It is not according to man. It's not some man's stuff. It's not what men have come up with. How did he get this? Listen to this. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, 
but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he says, I got it straight from God, Jesus, he says. Jesus showed me what the gospel is. That's the gospel I'm preaching, he says. For you have heard of my former conduct in Juda Judaism. He says, I'm a, I was a former Jew. How I pers persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. He was the biggest persecutor of the church. Killed the Christian people. Was behind the killing and the arrest of Christian people. Terrible man. You know how I was, a, I was into Judaism. How much I believed it. How much of a Jew I was. And then he says, and I advanced in Judaism beyond my, many of my contemporaries in my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. In other words, he says, I never went to Peter and all these fellows and got what the gospel is. I was into Judaism. I advanced in Judaism beyond my companions, many of my companions. I learned it more than most people in, in, in Jewish religion. And I was an expert in it. And I was a persecutor of the church. I believed in it more than these people that are coming to you and telling you about Judaism. I believed it more than them. But I am now telling you, you don't need that. You need Jesus Christ, he says. Now listen to this. Then after these three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I wrote to you, indeed before God, I do not lie. He says, yes, I met Peter. I stayed with him for 15 days later on. I know the brother of Jesus, James, and so on. But other than that, I don't know anyone. And I did not learn it from them. I got it from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is trying to tell how authentic, authentic uh, how authentic the gospel is that he's preaching. How real it is. How true it is. It is not the gospel according to man. It is the gospel that he preached. And it is free from all these entanglements of, of legalism and so on. Now go to chapter 3. In chapter 3 we read 7, 8 and 9, right? Where he says that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. Now he says, even if you are born to Abraham... <laughs> Unless you put your faith in Jesus, only those who are of faith are, of, are the sons of Abraham, he says. And then in verse 8, he says, the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. What is the most important thing about Abraham? He believed. He believed God. So if you don't have faith, if you're simply born to Abraham... You're not a son of Abraham. You must have faith like Abraham, he says. Only if you have faith, you're a son of Abraham. Because to appropriate and enjoy the blessings of Abraham, you need to have the faith of Abraham. It doesn't come on you just because you're born as a child of Abraham. You got to believe in what Abraham believed. Well, by believing, you can walk in the blessings of God. So that is why there is the blessing of Abraham and there is the faith of Abraham. You can't get the blessing just by being born to Abraham. You got to get the blessing by having the faith of Abraham, he says. And then listen to the description of the gospel in verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15... He said, this is the gospel, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again. He left it at that. In Galatians 1, he said, I didn't get the gospel from anyone. I got it straight from Jesus Christ. God separated me from my mother's womb to preach this gospel and revealed Christ and revealed the gospel to me and told me to go and preach. He says, I'm authentic. I come straight with that learning from God. I got this gospel from God. And then now he gives an expansion or the exposition of the gospel that he mentioned. First he said it's only death, burial and resurrection. Now he gives what happened behind that death, burial and resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15 he says he died, he was buried, he rose again. That's all he says. He leaves it at that. But now he says what happened when he died? He says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what happened when he died. Put our hands together. 
These are some awesome days that we live in. Right? of Elijah bearing the word of the Lord These are the days of the servant Moses righteousness being restored Those days are days of great triumphs famine and darkness and sore Still the voice in the desert Crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on clouds, shining like sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. So hear a jubilee, and out of silence hear the sound. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. These are the days of his servant David, rebuilding the temple of prayer. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white as the world. Shining like sun at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee, and out of science, hill salvation. Behold, behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like sun at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee, and out of science, hill salvation. There's no God like our God. See it. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of sight until salvation. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like sun. 